Hi and welcome back to Toby's Real Life Skills with Toby. It's me. Today's video will focus on the Echoworthy battery monitor. I also try to incorporate other things besides just Victron and cheap things, what I'm doing. This is one kind of things I also like to do, just explore new products and new things. So I hope you enjoy that stuff as well a bit. We'll connect it, we'll double check how does it perform, what does it show, what are the features, what is good, what is bad, and then uh, it might help you to get one or not, who knows. But let's jump right into it. So I did build a little setup, nothing crazy. I do have an inverter in here. We do have a positive wire, we have a negative wire, both is not connected as of now. The only thing, what I did so far is having the Echoworthy battery monitor over here, having the second unit is over here, I'll explain you more about it. And I just put it on a little wooden frame so I do not mess it up all the time and that you can follow what's happening. I hope that makes it a little bit easier. Additionally, we do have a battery monitor version 2.0 user manual from Echoworthy in English and German. I'm not sure if they knew that I'm German or not. It does come with a couple, you know, information about they call the hall sensor, which is this unit over here. Then we have the display interface, which is this over here and also explains all the different um, buttons, lights, connections and interfaces on the side. And then we have a wiring diagram and that's what I tried to follow a little bit and I hope I made it correct. That's what I'm doing here in a second. Then there is more explanation about the display pages and we'll get there as soon as we've set it up. We are using, as you can imagine, the Red Audio 12.8 volt 100 amp hours mini. Thanks again to Red Audio for providing this rental slash borrowing this one for free. So I can record a couple of videos with this unit. So far you have seen it in a couple other videos somewhere up there. If you want to know more about it, there's one more video coming pretty soon and it's focusing also on, and it's focusing on car camping. So this is something, especially the Mini, might be a very, very nice unit for that. And a comparison, of course, also to a little bigger batteries. Still lithium-ion phosphate battery over here. So all you need to know. Um, all the features you can find on their website as well. Um, I'll link in the description below as well as a coupon. A little discount on that one as well in case you want to get it. I think it's a pretty budget-friendly battery to be honest. We'll connect everything with this one. By the way, it was fully charged. This unit, or this unit, this unit comes with the hall sensor over here. As it explains in the instructions, the positive wire which goes straight to the battery, the charge current direction is going into the battery. And when you look here, there is another wire, set of wires, positive and negative, which do connect below here. So those are the wires which go straight to battery and they power this little unit. They have a positive wire and a negative wire. Pretty simple. There is a second, oh, here it is, there is a second cable and this cable is way longer. The one side connects into the battery monitor. It has three pins. So there's it is interface with three pins and two pins. So it should be pretty straightforward. And here on the other side it connects also the hall sensor over there. And that is when you talk about the straight connection from the battery monitor to the sensor. That the display knows what is going on at all. This connection, the TAM sensor, do not disassemble. This one was already pre-assembled and connected here on the bottom. Here's the temperature sensor. This one is the wire which goes to the battery monitor display and this down here goes straight to the battery. And then there is a third cable which is this one. Two pin and this one is the power supply for... this is the power supply for this display. Plugging this one in We'll start connecting with the positive here first. Remember, this is a 100 amp hour battery, so there might be a little spark. Be careful and prepared for that. You can avoid sparks. Um, if you have a resistor or something like that, I do not have one. Lay them on the top. And the bottom will be the big wire, which is, by the way, I'm using a four gouge wire here because that's what I had laying around. I'm testing with a 600 watt pure sine wave inverter. We'll continue with negative. And I mentioned there might be a little spark. Don't be surprised. It's not perfect, so I'll take the bolt, put all the three wires on top of each other. I can 
easily connect it. So, I think you should also see this one, right? That we have already some power on the sensor. I'll turn on the inverter just to see if it works. And there is a little green light down here usually. And I think you can see it in my thumb. Perfect. To also turn it on. I heard a fan. We'll turn it on with pressing and holding this power button here for, I think it said two uh, just minutes. Yeah, do two minutes and then we'll, we'll be fine. One, two, I'll just wait until it turns on. Oh, nice. Acre worthy battery monitor. Right now we have nothing set up. We have no load on there, except probably from this sensor. It tells me the battery has a voltage, oh, sorry. It goes in standby or sleep after 30 seconds. I want to check the volts. It says 13.4, the splinking unit. Here we can see 13.4 on the Echoworthy battery monitor as well as on the voltmeter. I think we're happy with that at the moment. Next thing is for sure we have to do first some kind of settings. I checked already we have to do that because it does come with no settings. But therefore, as I mentioned, there are a couple pages which do explain you on or in those instructions what's visible, right? The first normal view, how they call it, when you click on, you know, command back, it's a touch screen, right? Touch screen, amazing. And then we see, um, the color might be a little different in the camera right now. Make it way less bright. Oh, then you see the colors better. Maybe we'll do that for the camera. I think that's better. And then we have a symbol view. When I click on symbol view, we do see it takes a second when it changes, and then it tells you, oh, the battery is 100%. So what we can see here is a blinking green and blue light and that's that the data communication is successful between this monitor and the hall sensor. It feels like it's a touch pad a little bit, you know, one of those MacBooks touch pads. So we do have three views here. The simple one, always when you change, then it takes a second to calculate and show information. We have the normal one, which gives you a little bit more information, maybe a different information. Still temperature and the voltage is here. Then we do have the chart, which should give you over time also the usage. The chart shows the trend of specific parameters, indicators in a period of time. So that's pretty cool. The curve data range is 0 to 200. And I guess, yeah, here on the side you can filter on it and just see what's going on. So now we can, and that's what I meant, we have to set up the battery. So here on the right there's a parameter. <laughs> I assume it means parameters. So we'll click on it and now it asks you for a password. And every time you have to enter something, type something in, this little pop-up will pop up. And there's a default password 2016. So it means 2016. Not sure, not sure if that was the year when they first time brought out this product. Hitting OK. Now it goes back and enters the everything and now you have to hit enter again. And now we are in the area where we have to configure everything. Ideally, you have a product manual, battery pack main parameters. You go a little further and then you see something like here on page five with uh, over voltage disconnect, low voltage disconnect, all those things. I would say we'll do that now here in the battery monitor instructions, page six, there are parameter setting page and there are the legend what it is so that's what I'm doing now just that you're not wondering I'm just pulling it out of my some somewhere we now need to set the parameters base parameters here in the blue which are blue labeled that's what we need to do set a battery nominal capacity and full capacity voltage so don't cough nominal capacity so they say full Full capacity voltage is recommended to be the highest voltage displayed when the battery is fully charged and the charger is not unplugged. That means when you use this one, we delete this, and as we know, the battery could be up to 14.6, depending on your charger, if it's powerful enough. And that can be the maximum possible, which the battery voltage could look like when the charger is not unplugged yet. The nominal capacity is the amp hour, so we have a 100 amp hour battery. Charge the battery to full. So the next step would be charge the battery to full after connecting the cable and setting the parameters. So that's all we need to do. Mine is considered as 0% between 10 and 12 volts. So I should go already to 12 actually. 
that's considered empty. All right, we'll go back, we'll go to normal view, and it says it's at zero percent here. Setting up everything, we now need to charge a battery to full. So I do not know this display very well, but I'll try to explain what I understand from it. So power's going in, we see at 20 amp, that's what it's charging, that's the maximum what this power supply is capable of doing. Stop going in sleep, I don't like that. Would be great to just turn it off. Um, maybe we can. Click on back, hold asleep, zero seconds, maybe that's disabling, hopefully. All right, battery is fully charged. It tells us with 40.5 volts laying here. We got it to 100%. It just changed from zero to 100%. So it looks like that's the max we were able to get in. Um, I'll disconnect the charge and everything really quick. All right, um, what I don't understand, uh, connection failed. Oh, please check the connection, okay. Oh, what was that? Interesting. All right, well, just, you know, pulled some loads from it. Very, very small, nothing crazy. Turning on the inverter. I'm surprised that there's no rem remaining time. So you can see I'm plugging something in. There we are, having it on full speed. And what's pretty nice, you can see there is a remaining time. It's going out. Quite interesting that we only have 10 minutes left in this entire battery, but we'll see that's the case. Oh, that's nice. Oh yeah, this battery will be empty pretty soon. Look at that. It's quite interesting. Let's see. I want to see parameters again. Six. Okay, okay. We do have capacity 100. I don't know what it is calculating it from. The battery was already pretty full when we uh, charged it. I guess that's what it's assuming, that's all the capacity which went in. Maybe it needs uh, one or two full cycles to calibrate correctly. Right now it's... <laughs> this fan needs 4 amp and it's... it's oh god. Oh, not sure if you can read it. Connection failed, please check the connection. That's the second time it's happening. I don't know, I didn't do anything. I didn't even wiggle with anything here right now. Oh, look at it. We have 59%, it's yellow now. I did find out why we have those values blinking and it says flashing alarm. The numbers will flash when over voltage, over current or under voltage happens. And you see it says 4.6, it's going out. But here it says 4.4 at the moment. I have some strange measurement. I'll check closer to the battery. 4.6 as a battery as well, and when we go to the negative, it says 5. Another power plug, a power supply for my laptop. So we're now pulling almost 10 amps. 1%, 0%, okay, we dead. All right, we're still pulling. Let me disconnect the battery. I think that's, that's the most likely case what can happen. So I'll go ahead. The display will be plugged in a second because I'm just disconnecting positive. Oh, and go back, plug it back in. Now we have power again. Hello. Oh. It says it has communication. Okay. Oh, there we have the voltage. There we have a temperature. Okay. Let's go in back. Let's check the parameters. So, by the way, this is also very complicated to get access to. I like the touch screen, but it's very responsive. That's great. But I feel like it's not necessary. Um, to have the options great, but when you hit OK, and now you have to hit Enter again. Ugh. And, uh, bummer, it did not save my preset from last time. I saw that earlier already. I just wanted to confirm it, so that's the second time this is happening. As soon as you disconnect the battery from it, everything what your preset was, you have to type it in again. And also the preset for 30 seconds. Uh, yeah. There we have it, 100%, still blinking. Um, parameters reset when you disconnect it. What else can I say about it? Dang, look at that. So, blinking temperature and amp, which is going out. But we have set up finally the 100 amp hours. 
what did it take? Um, after it was fully charged, I entered the 100 again after it did reset. And now it's going off the 100, it looks like. Um, but when I go in here, parameters... I don't know. It is gone again. I, I have no idea what's going on here. It looks like it did, does calculate from the 100 I put in for, uh, earlier, so that's nice. Let me unplug the cable here on the side. Now this one doesn't have any any information. I would assume the calculation is happening in here. And it's continuing the calculation, which is nice. So it, it means somehow the calculation happening and all the values probably saved somehow in the sensor. Well, that's a good thing. Well, that, that's definitely one success. Let me disconnect the display again one more time to see if it maybe can save everything. And it's gone. Let's connect it again. Oh, there we have it. Oh, no freaking way. This time it did save everything. Finally, God. I don't know how many attempts I had. Then I did set the amp hours. I have no idea how I reproduced that, guys. I have no idea. So, but as soon as I disconnect it, I have to cycle it again, otherwise it's inaccurate. Positive touch display is really cool, really nice. The colors are like, it would be a great addition with some major flaws. I wish, I really wish that those flaws would be improved. Uh, it should have some kind of internal memory to keep everything what you did set up in the parameters so it stays and you don't have to worry about it when you unplug it and plug it back in. It can happen on accident. Uh, is this kind of monitoring the most accurate compared to a shunt? I'm not sure. I have not done this research. Maybe you know better. Uh, maybe you can leave some comments about that. But other than that, the display itself is really cool. It's good colors, nice size. Well, I don't know, maybe they have a bracket or something and it looks like you can just put it into a wall. That would be nice. I do understand the, the password thing. I do not like it. Um, maybe I would like it when it's easier to access. You click on it and then you just type it in and hit enter. Instead of you click on it, then you have to click in the field. Then you have to select the numbers, which are pretty tiny. It should be bigger when you select something. Then you have to hit enter and OK, first OK, and then enter again. The button is on the right, then it's on the left. Those things are, uh, it's, it needs some improvement. It's a good approach. It's not there where it should be. Um, I'm looking forward to those improvements. It's a nice concept. I like it. It is not too expensive as well. But um, please improve those things and everyone will be happy. And if you like that stuff, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It would help me a lot. Thanks for watching. Cheers.